Good morning. I'm Lynn and this is Arnie. And welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. So that hair day, huh? Oh like I don't know, are you uh, is it a like a mohawk? I don't know. It's an is it lawn. trying to be a rooster? <laughs> anyway, we got work to do. Let's get to it. Yesterday we discussed what uh, you might need to start up your own sheep farm. Today I thought we should discuss what you should have set up before you actually bring your first sheep home. Um, you would think that people would be really prepared for bringing home uh, their new animals, but it is extremely common here where people will come and pick up the sheep and have no supplies for them, uh, no housing planned out, uh, nothing is planned. All that they wanted was the sheep and hadn't thought ahead. <laughs> so today I'm gonna give you a few things that I think you should absolutely have before the sheep step onto your property. So you would think that people would at least have an area to put the sheep in a barn, a shed of some sort, um, you really need that. When you are taking sheep off someone else's home, they are used to the routine there and they have no idea how your farm works. So um, if you just bring them in and uh, like offload them into your paddock and you have maybe a shed there and you think, uh, oh, they'll just run in there at night or they'll go in to eat and they'll go in there to get out of the cold or rain or whatever. Don't make that assumption. Um, they don't recognize your shed, your barn, your lean-to, and it can be a scary thing. So instead of going in, uh, they chances are they'll run to the farthest corner of your paddock and stay there and not come anywhere near and then you're gonna have a really difficult time getting them in so the first thing you need to do is to plan how to get the sheep off your truck trailer and into um, a really confined area where you can get to know the sheep and the sheep will get to know you and uh, you're going to leave them there for a few days um, until they've calmed down and they're eating well, drinking well, and they understand that this is home now. So if you had um, a little shed, say, that you're putting them in or a little barn, I would lock them into um, a, a small enough area where they can walk around and explore, um, have easy access to food and salt and mineral and water. But keep them locked in there if like if that's the barn um, they're gonna be in and you want to let them out to a paddock say in the future let them get to the point where they understand that's home so when you do release them into a paddock they will naturally go back in when you when they uh, need to uh, get shelter or food otherwise like I say they will not go in it will be a tough thing so one, number one is to have an area prepared for the sheep to go into, um, kind of in confinement or um, in quarantine if you have other sheep where they can get to know your place and understand that this is now their place. And if you can drive right up to that area and drop them off, all the better. Um, that'll make it easier. But if not, you might uh, consider having a gate set up so you'll have a like runway system where they can run into the area you want them confined or you could make sure you had sheep halters where you could lead them out into the barn until they're ready these are things you really need to have prepared i guess maybe that should have been number two not number one number one is you have to pick them up from the farm so make sure when you pick up your sheep that you have a safe way to bring them home. Um, a safe box, a safe trailer, where the sheep aren't going to be looking out uh, big holes and uh, gazing out onto a freeway as you drive along it, um, or with openings so large on it that they could jump out, 
or they could stick their head out and, and get it lopped off in traffic. Um, or it's really, really wobbly that it could break if, if you had even the slightest fender bender. Things that you would think were common sense, but apparently are not. So um, yeah, first get your transportation home set up and make sure it's safe. Number two, make sure you have a safe confined area for your sheep to go into where they are going to live for about a week getting to know you and your farm. So you've gotten your sheep safely home and they're in their nice new pen locked up and comfortable. You have nice bedding on the ground for them. Um, the next thing you need is to feed them. Now the time to go out and buy hay and your grains and salt minerals is not after they arrive at your home, it's beforehand. And so hopefully you've done your research and talked to the breeder and you know what the sheep have been eating at the home you bought them from. So have they been eating wrapped wet hay? Have they been eating dry hay? Have they been eating TMR? Are they still on creep feed? Are they eating any kind of grain? What type? How much? It doesn't matter what type of feed you want to be feeding your sheep. When you first bring them home, you want them to be eating similar to how they were eating at the home they came from. Sheep are creatures of habit and if you're gonna switch the type of feed they're having it's got to be a gradual thing or they won't eat it. They won't understand that they need to eat it. They won't eat it correctly. They'll gorge out or bloat or whatever. So try to have all your hay purchased before the sheep arrive similar style to what you bought from. Um, find out how much grain, if any, they're getting and have a couple of bags of that available on hand too with the necessary scoops and buckets and things to feed it out. And uh, then your sheep will transition much more easily if it's a totally, totally different feed system. Um, We've had sheep that will come in, have come in here and just couldn't transition over. Um, it was from TMR to um, regular hay. And once we had a ram who died. Um, when we bought Snappy, we brought um, another ram at the same time as him. And Snappy did great. The other one just couldn't figure it out. Um, so it can happen even when you know what you're doing, but best to be prepared. Have your food and grain and everything all bought ahead of time. It's not necessary to buy it ahead of time, but I would recommend it anyway. Um, getting your salt and mineral ahead of time, um, making sure that it's mineral that is designed specifically for sheep, that it's in loose form, not uh, blocks, and uh, have that all set up for them as well. Um, salt and mineral and how you feed your hay um, no matter how it is you should have it all like set up like have your containers that you're going to feed it in already and already prepared so that the sheep walk into it and as they're adjusting to their new pen they can just walk around and explore and find out where everything is please be aware that um a lot of buckets and stuff like that if they're just sitting on the ground the sheep will paw in it uh, lay in it walk through it tip them over so it's best to probably have um, salt and mineral feeders and hay feeders and stuff that are secure that won't tip over same with your water drinkers even if it's a bucket have it in a secured area so that they can't tip it over when they drink it and that would be the next thing. Um, have water easily accessible for those sheep that are coming onto your property. You would think that would be really obvious. I don't know how many people have bought sheep that had no water. 
So um, think about how you're going to get water to them and be prepared. Um, we feed these type of buckets when they're in the jugs and they, a single sheep will drink about three of those buckets a day. So um, be aware of how much water they drink and, and have some kind of system to get water to them. Um, yeah, I would say probably 75% of the people that buy sheep here aren't prepared. Um, we did uh, deliver some sheep to a farm once and it was like heaven when I got there. The pen was all bedded up in thick, clean, yellow straw. They had a beautiful bunk feeder built out of wood for them. They had their salt and mineral feeders on the wall all stacked up. And they had pails of water there ready for them so that when they walked in, and they had a door so they can, could, could confine them there before they let them loose. And uh, that was truly the most beautiful sight for me, delivering sheep uh, to someone's home. I felt uh, they were going into a place where they were going to be well cared for. Um, part of caring for animals in general is being prepared. Um, yeah, they're living creatures. You need you need to be ready for them. The worst was um, delivering a bunch of sheep to a farm where they had a single strand of electric um, up on a highway. Our sheep had never been on an electric fence yet, so weren't trained to it at all. And there is a, a learning curve with an electric fence. So you don't want to be training a sheep to electric right on a highway. And then they had like one of those little calf huts where the sheep could go in to get out of the weather and stuff. It was one calf hut and there was like 20 sheep. Um, so not only could the sheep not possibly all get in there to seek shelter, um, they also had never seen anything like that. So it probably wouldn't even cross their mind to go into it. Um, I was so upset I couldn't get out of the car. Um, it was devastating. So now um, we don't deliver sheep. Uh, in general, we have people pick them up on their own. But I, I, I spend a lot of time raising these sheep and I truly want them to go to a home where they're going to live a really good life and they're going to be really productive and the people are going to think they're fantastic. And for all of that to happen, uh, people pay, play a huge part. Um, sheep that you get, part of it is like you're getting it, you've got the quality, you're ready to go, but you have to maintain that. You got to keep that going and keep it alive. So um, there's a lot of preparation and and research involved before you actually bring them home. And if you have a good breeder, they will be more than happy to give you all the kind of information you want and welcome you to come over and look around, give you ideas, set up YouTube channels to give advice, <laughs> whatever. But these are the things you need to consider when you're bringing home a sheep. They're not like a cat and a dog, which are a lot easier. There's a lot more to know about and get ready for. And then uh, if you do all that, you're going to have a wonderful experience with your sheep. The next thing I would do if you're a first time sheep purchaser, um, I would um, have a vet come out and check your sheep over. Not for illness or anything like that because I'm assuming that you've researched your sheep and your sheep are in good health. But just to get a rapport with a vet um, so he knows your property, he knows what you're doing. Um, he can give you tips and advice, show you how to administer drugs, um, give you tips on as to what types of medical supplies you should have on hand at all time, things like that. It's, it's really, really handy. Um, hopefully you will only need the vet to come out that one time and you won't see him again. Sorry, any veterinarians that are watching. But um, that initial consultation and uh, advice is well worth the money to have them come out and, and have a look at your sheep. And 
So once you have the basics for your sheep um, all set out, then you're ready to bring home your sheep. Things like the the medications and markers and stuff like that. You you have time to get all those things and get them established. Again, talk to the breeder you bought from. Ask what they would advise. Talk to your vet. Ask what he would advise. And um, probably get a magazine from like uh, Canadian Wool Growers. In, if you live in Canada, they sell absolutely every type of sheep supply that you will ever need. Go through that, browse through that, see what you think you'd like on your farm, what you don't have, and go from there. So these are basically tips just for getting the sheep to your home and getting them established in the first week or two. Um, the last thing that I would advise is that once you have your sheep home and all set up and they're in that um, confinement pen getting used to things that you watch them quite carefully make sure that they actually are eating and drinking water and stuff and looking lively um, it can happen that sheep will develop shipping fever when they go to a new after they've arrived at a new farm. Um, it's due to stress and, and um, going to a new place. Um, they become susceptible to viruses and stuff. And um, they'll get droopy ears. They'll go off their feed. They'll usually stand to the side. Um, they can get runny nose. Those are symptoms of shipping fever when you um, have just brought them in. A lot of people will give them a shot of antibiotics as soon as they get to the farm, but I don't really think that's necessary if you do all those things I said, like making the transportation very smooth and stress-free, making sure they move into a place that's already well set up and comfortable and cozy and welcoming. Um, then you probably aren't going to run into any problems like that, but it can happen and Antibiotics are the solution for that, but it's something to watch out for anyway if You're someone like me who wants your sheep to be friendly too when they're in confinement That's a really good time to get to know them and to Get them to warm up to you Don't pressure them by uh, forcing them to be your friends like chasing them and uh, trying to catch them. The best thing is uh, to sit with them, sit on a bale of straw, sit on a little chair, in with them, and do nothing. Let them come see you. Um, the quieter and less pressuring you are, the more success you'll have in winning your sheep over and getting them to be really quiet with you. Some people don't care about that, but if you are someone who would like sheep to be as friendly as ours, though, that's what I would do. I'm not going to do a monstrous full-length cinematic movie this time around like I did yesterday, which was a little out of control probably. Um, I think uh, I covered all the bases today. So for me and Gladiator, we're going to call this a day and hope you'll join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.